Hey guys, it is Brido here, and welcome back to our Liverpool Career Mode series. This is episode 8, and today's episode we're going to start off with our contract offer from Denmark. We're signing the contract you guys asked for, and we're going to do it here. Uh, essentially, this is our international job that we'll be doing along for our Liverpool Career Mode. So they'll be uh, intertwined into one, and we'll play some games as Denmark, you know, over the years. Not too uh, intense of those, they'll just be on the international breaks uh, for our players and then we get an opportunity in those uh, long stretches that we wouldn't normally play games to play as Denmark so we're gonna take a little bit of a look at essentially what this means and what we're working with here I uh, will go into the squad selection menu first and that's essentially where you can select your squad for the next uh, you know international uh, game that you're going to play and we already have a squad selected here this was the original squad selected for the team we can switch these players out so I'm gonna take the time before our next game to really go through these players and uh, Find the best ones I believe could be the best players for us, and also some younger players too, because this is a good way for us to see also what potential uh, players, uh, some Danish players that we could potentially pick up for uh, Liverpool in the future, and uh, also get a feeling for you know maybe making this team better for the future as well. So here you can see you know a lot of uh, you know, a lot of players on their uh, roster, so quite a few to choose from. And then on the other side is the national pool. It is 23 pages long, so quite heavy, uh, but the top is pretty much where we will be looking at because those are the best players. As you can see, we can also look through the national pool on the opposite side as well. So I'll take the time, like I said, to go through this and try and make the best possible choices for our team, possibly even switch up the formation so that we can get as many wins as possible in our World Cup uh, qualifying matches that we still have to play. Here you can see the actual squad that we've uh, used previously, the ones that we haven't used, but the, the CPU has chosen for the team. Uh, Daniel Egger is not in there, but he'll get plenty of starts for us in the, the next uh, coming days as, or coming uh, months as we uh, try and get into uh, the World Cup. But you can see that they run a 4-2-3-1, so plenty of attacking midfielders with one lone striker up front. Nicholas Bentner is that guy. And you can see Christian Eriksen as well, probably the prize gem of this team. Uh, you know, extremely talented player, so we're going to really enjoy using him and possibly could get a better feel for him as well and might be able to, you know, really know if he might be a guy that we could pick up for Liverpool. I'm not saying that's going to happen yet, but, you know, a lot, a couple of you guys have been asking for him and he's quite expensive and any player like that that is extremely expensive, it's always nice to have a little bit of a, a free trial to see what they're like before actually doing it. So you can see we, we sim ahead and uh, before I actually go through this, uh, I go back once more and just wanted to show you where we are in the World Cup qualifiers. So you guys know what we're dealing with at this point. So already four games have been played and we're sitting dead last with a negative eight goal differential, one draw and three losses. So not too nice so far. We're really going to have to work hard if we're going to catch up with the top of the group. And I think that's going to be a really tough ask. You can see Turkey's going to be the team that we're going to have to catch. And our next game is in uh, February against Finland. So we have a little bit of weight there. There you can see we lost to Denmark, lost to Czech Republic, lost to Turkey and drew with Austria. We have a game against Finland and Austria coming up, so we need to win those next two in February. After that, though, we have another matchup, or I think a couple more. I think there's two more sets there against Turkey. That will be a must-win as well, and Finland. And lastly, we play Czech Republic and the Netherlands. So six more games left in the group, but we're not going to play any of those till February, so there's still a little bit of a ways off. Uh, but in the meantime, though, we're going to get back to Liverpool and back to our games uh, that we have playing here. And uh, we're going to start off this episode with the Capital One Cup. We have our game here for I believe this is the the quarterfinals against Newcastle so a team that we just recently faced in uh, the Barclays Premier League we had a, a tough matchup against them but we did win the game and we're looking to uh, replicate that in this matchup hopefully get closer and closer to uh, repeating as the League Cup champions we still have a way to go uh, beating Spurs was a nice start in the round of 16 but this is another tough matchup uh, in the the quarterfinals and we'll be starting a, a pretty strong starting 11. You can see Suso gain to start there. You guys asked for it. I'm going to give him the start in this game, see what he can do in that center attacking mid role. And we also got Barini on the wing there. Something that I've yet to try really uh, this season and something that I actually like quite a bit in this game. So you're going to see him a little bit more in that role. It's a role that he can play. He obviously uh, likes to play as striker, but he's quite quick. And uh, one of his alternate positions is the wing role. So we're going to give him that when we can. Also, when a guy like Suarez comes back, he's going to be better on the wing than on the bench, definitely. First chance of the game falls to Cissé there at around the four-minute mark, but it just goes wide, luckily for us. And then Yeshel, a couple minutes later, gets his own opportunity, puts that one wide as well. Both teams getting good opportunities to start off this game, trying to get that early goal, that early lead. 
But it's yeah, staying elusive at this point. There's another chance for Newcastle to get that lead. But we're able to clear it off Cissé and it just goes into a goal kick. Another chance here goes to Teode. He's able to, to come in here. Takes the shot. Laying off the save but just oh so close. We're able to clear it though. And it leads to just a corner that we're able to handle quite nicely. After a flurry of early opportunities, the game slows down around the 30 minute mark. But a chance for Shaheen here to get a shot off. Scuffs at that one though, unfortunately. And the second half is about to end at this point. But one more chance for Liverpool as Yeshel gets the ball off the header. Creates some space. Has a chance to score but just puts it wide. And unfortunately the half ends at a nil-nil draw still. And uh, both teams really uh, putting the pressure on trying to get that goal. And uh, as you can see from the match facts here, the game is quite even at this point. Both sides getting their opportunities, but the game really uh, at a standstill. Both sides looking for that uh, very crucial first goal as of yet. So now we move ahead to the second half here. The first chance of the half falls to Ben Afra, but Leno comes out, challenges on the play, and is able to make a nice save that just leads to a corner. On the corner, Newcastle has an opportunity to make a chance happen here. Puts one into the box, but it strangely goes all the way through. And at this point, we uh, make a quick change after a couple more minutes of play. Bringing off Suso and bringing on Steven Gerrard. He's still injured, but we believe he can make an impact and inspire the team. And it's really interesting, i got to say, that you know having him back in the team, I could just feel that little bit more of a presence. And you can see here, at around the 75th minute mark, an opportunity comes our way. Barini passes it into Steven Gerrard. He takes a shot and scores. A nice one by him, and I'm really happy that he is back. We're going to still usher him in slowly at this point. We do not want to rush him back and uh, get him injured once more, but still nice to see him making an impact at this point. Quartes unfortunately fouls the Newcastle player there, which leads to a free kick. And who else is on the header but Papis Demba Cisse? A nice goal by him, but unfortunately it is against us. And in the 90th minute, too, the game is now tied at this point, and we're uh, looking at extra time in this League Cup matchup. We get one more opportunity before the half ends. Johnson's able to come in on the wing here with a chance to cross in. Yeshua off an opportunity. Misses it though. Sterling puts it over to Barini. His shot. Yeshua on the rebound. Scores the goal. And that gets us back to the lead. A crazy turn of events. We're able to get the lead back after Papis Demba Cisse's goal. A nice one there on the rebound. And a crazy turn of events as this game is actually going to end in our favor. And in uh, regular time as well. We didn't have to go to extra time. And I was just, I was I was going crazy at this point, guys, I'm not going to lie. I was just trying to get the ball in there, it was flying around, I didn't even know what was going on. But we'll take it, because it's a 2-1 win for Liverpool. And we're moving on to the semi-finals, so we're that much closer to repeating in the League Cup. And you can see Bern Leno with the Man of the Match award there, quite deserving, a great game by him. Making some great saves overall, and uh, you can see the match facts show the game was still quite tight uh, throughout the game. And there's the turn of events late on, two goals in the 90th minute. A crazy game and a, a crazy win for us. And our matchup now is going to be against Arsenal. We're going to take on Arsenal in the semifinals. And I believe it's Chelsea versus South, or Southampton in uh, the other semifinal there. So coming down from uh, the League Cup here, we're going to move on to another game in the Barclays Premier League. And this one's against Southampton. Uh, another side that is still alive in the League Cup, like I said, playing against Chelsea in the next round. And they're a pretty good team. I think that, you know, obviously... They're not doing that well in the season thus far, but they have a good side, a great offensive players. Uh, I just think that their back end is what lacks, and uh, hopefully we can capitalize on that. Before this game starts up, though, I wanted to talk about one more thing. It's now the, the month of December, and before this game, or either before the Newcastle game, an interesting article popped up. The fans were saying they wanted to see us uh, bring in another attacking forward, bring in another potential striker to bolster on our lineup. They weren't happy with the fact that we are undermanned at that point. And I want to do that as well. That is something that I really want to look into doing uh, in this transfer window because we've had issues with the injuries. But I really think that if we bring in that class striker, that you know world-class uh, type of player that can really make an impact, we can start scoring a lot more goals and make this uh, trip to the, the Champions League uh, a little bit easier on ourselves. But... You know, it's going to come down to who's going to be the right guy and how much money we really have to spend. We really only do have around 10 uh, million pounds at this point. We could uh, loosen that pocket change up a little bit by requesting more funds. Uh, by requesting more funds, we're probably going to have to, you know, up the stakes a little bit, say that we will make the Champions League. We're going to have to really commit to our goals. If not, we could also sell a player potentially, but I think going that route might be a mistake as we really, at this point, do not have a lot of depth. And... You know, we're going to have to rely on the fact that in the future we'll have our off-season budget that can kind of bolster our lineup. But at the time being, I think that a striker is really what we need to kind of, you know, bring us to the next level and ensure that we make a Champions League spot. 
give us that opportunity to uh, score more goals because, uh, you know, we've had these points where we've scored uh, quite plentifully. But you can see, you know, through the past episodes, a lot of these games have been real tight affairs. Games that we've lost have been games that we haven't been able to score a goal or, you know, with games that we've drawn have been similar as well. And, uh, you know, I think bringing in that extra striker that could potentially, you know, bring an extra threat and also, you know, make the other players a little bit more rested too would be something that we could be or definitely benefit from. So, you know, keep your, keep your eyes out also. Uh, start thinking about potential player because it's not yet. It's not for a couple episodes, but something that we can definitely talk about going forward. And uh, names can start being thrown around. And like I said, we're not talking about, oh, this guy's 19 or 20 and he's, he's in his 70s or something like that. And he's going to be great in the future. I'm really thinking about someone that's the mid-80s, maybe low 80s if we you know just don't have the money. But somewhere around that point, they don't have to be extremely young. They can be mid-20s as well, just as long as they're not in their late 20s. Because we want to have someone that's around for a couple of years, not you know, you know, know, going down in his overall quite quickly. We want to make a smart purchase and a purchase that will last for a bit. But this is something that we can talk about going forward and uh, start looking for as well. So starting up the second half here, you can see that we make a change uh, as Barini comes on for the young Pacheco there. This change was essentially just because we weren't getting that great opportunities in the first half we wanted to see if we could change our fortunes going into the second half this game was you know winding down and really there weren't that many opportunities for us and Southampton were actually getting more of the chances on net and this is quite worrying as we we're really feeling like maybe this game could go as a draw and if it wasn't for Leno possibly it could be going in the favor of a loss and you know after our success as of late this was something that we did not want to handle so making a couple changes was a positive and here we get a free kick at the 85th minute. So our first real major opportunity of the half. Asadi is able to, to cross one in here. And I took the advice of us, you know, a couple of you guys, what you said. You're able to do that. It's a little bit of a curve on the shot. And it really benefits there as Brini is able to put a nice header in there. Nice goal by him. And he's really been actually making a nice impact for us as of late. So late goal for us in this game, guys. And uh, something that we're able to kind of squeak one out here. This wasn't the best game that we've had as of yet this season. Especially after our Newcastle game. This wasn't anything to be too happy about, but we're actually able to hold on to this one. We're able to get three points out of this one, a crucial three points to keep that ball rolling for us. One more opportunity here at the end of the half as Shelby's able to cross one in here. And another thing too, actually, is I've switched now at this point moving ahead uh, back to Steven Gerrard as our uh, our uh, corner kick takers, and uh, Luis Suarez will be back in that role uh, when he's back as well. But for the time being, I've just been using whatever they already set, so that's why it's been kind of random. But you can see Burn Leno was the star once again in this game, having a great game overall. And an okay game from us. I'm not too happy with it, but we do get uh, the three points, which is important uh, moving forward. Moving on, though, we have one more game in this episode, and that is against Tottenham Hotspur. Another matchup against them. We've already faced them in the League Cup, but this is the first time that we're actually facing them in the league. And this one is once again at White Hart Lane. That place gave me quite a scare last time, and hopefully we'll be able to put up a little bit more of a fight in this one against uh, the Spurs. So we're moving into this one, and uh, we're starting a lineup that is a little bit more experienced than uh, last time around. We're really trying to do as best as we can to get the three points out of this game because we're still sitting in that fifth uh, position, and we're trying to move up. And this is a crucial game as the uh, Spurs are very close to us in the, the standings, and uh, taking the three points from this one would be quite crucial to us uh, getting back up into that top four. So yeah, starting up this game, I really had those goals in mind. I really felt like this game was a game that we could win. We also had to mind ourselves and play good defensively. We knew that uh, Spurs were going to come at us quite hard. They had, uh, you know, a very strong lineup, quite, uh, you know, plentiful amounts of offensive talent to use, and uh, we were a little bit in the lacking compared to them. So we needed to pick our opportunities and pick our chances if we wanted to have a chance in this game. Still, though, we give Borini the the start up the middle. He had a great game last game. We felt that. This could be something that he could, uh, you know, continue that streak with. And also, we gave Steven Gerrard the rest in this game. The reason for this is that he didn't have a bad game last game, but the game before, he had a great impact off the bench as a sub. We won't always use them as that, but as he gets a little bit older, his, uh, his energy does wane over the game. And in a, a game like this, we could really uh, benefit from him being an impact player later on rather than uh, being a player that really needs to be subbed off around the 60th minute or so. So in this one, he does uh, start on the bench, but we hope to bring him on later on when we do need uh, someone like him to make an impact. So moving on to the beginning of this game, you can see a couple of chances both ways, but Gilfie Sigerson on the breakaway in this one. A great chance for him, but off the bar, a real good opportunity for Spurs to take the lead early on here, but a missed chance from Gilfie and an opportunity uh, for us to capitalize on after uh, being saved by the bar. So uh, yeah, you can see 
Uh, Spurs were coming and taking their opportunities quite well early on. They were getting uh, quite a few chances as well. But we were trying to minimize their opportunities. We were trying to keep them to the outside the best we could at least. Um, we did get our own opportunity late on in the half here with Barini taking the shot off. But Lloris there with a nice save to keep this one still a nil-nil draw. And as you can see from the match facts in the first half, we did control, uh, you know, part of the possession. The possession was close, but the shots were really in Tottenham's favor. And going into the second half, I was trying to make it a goal of mine to keep our possession up and also keep the shots from Tottenham limited. But you can see 54th minute, there's a great opportunity for Tottenham to get the lead there. We're luckily saved by Bern Leno once again. Uh, he's, he's our savior of the season straight up thus far. And like I said before, you know, we have been having trouble uh, scoring goals. And the only reason why we're not mid-table at this point is because Bern Leno has been an absolute star in net uh, thus far. Uh, so here you can see an opportunity for us once again. Lucas Leva with an opportunity. But puts that one wide, unfortunately. We make a couple changes, though, as we bring on Steven Gerrard. We put Barini on the wing, and uh, we bring on Yeshel down the middle. These subs look to make an impact right away, and a couple minutes in they do. As Asadi is able to pass it over to Steven Gerrard, he finds Yeshel. He's able to work off his man, gets an opportunity in close, scores the goal. And in the 75th minute, we get our first goal of the game and a lead late on in this one. So uh, against the grain of play, once again, we're able to score against Tottenham, and we might be their bogey team. It's a little bit early to say that. But I'm quite happy with this result. And you can see as the clock winds down, they really did not get any opportunities. So we're able to close this game out quite comfortably. Once again, Bernalino the start of the game. Another clean sheet for him. And a great game overall from him in net. So we do take the win from this one, guys. And what does that mean? Well, that means we move up past uh, Spurs in the table, which is definitely a nice feeling. And that's the end of this episode, guys. I don't have the squad report for this episode, nor do I have... Uh, you know that much of a uh, actual standings, but we will uh, get the end of the standings from the FIFA 13 commentator I hope you guys enjoyed this episode though. Uh, let me know what you think regarding the striker position What should we do uh, for that moving forward uh, in the meantime though? I hope you guys enjoyed this episode and stay tuned for more to come Bottom of the table ready with four points and then reading up the table second bottom West Bromwich Albion with four points third bottom Southampton with five points Fourth bottom, Norwich City with seven points. 